Welcome back to the RT Clinic. Today's topic is something that I've just personally learned myself, but I think it'd be good to kind of pass it along to everybody else in the medical community out there. It is the effects of decreased venous return. Let's go. So we're back and we are going to talk about decrease in venous return. Now, when we talk about that, and I'm going to get to the board here in a second, but we know that that's a decreased amount of blood that comes back to the heart. And in the respiratory therapy world, in, in the nursing world, and a lot of the medical world, decreased venous return is a bad thing. But today, we're going to talk about some therapies that actually cause decreased venous return, but in a good way and for some disease processes that will actually benefit, the patient will benefit from decreased venous return. And so let's talk about it a little bit first, and then we'll talk about that therapy that helps it and uh, that disease process that could actually be benefited from it. So first of all, when we talk about this, we think about, and I'm gonna draw one of my really poor drawings, but I have my heart and my box lungs, which I love drawing and we have this heart in the middle here. And uh, when we talk about decreased venous return, we have actually two large vessels that come in to the heart, the inferior and the superior vena cava. Uh, obviously the superior is on the top, inferior is on the bottom. And we think about decreased venous return a lot on our ventilators because we've done a couple different things. We have high pressures of some type or we have really high, and a lot of people will blame it on this, and it definitely can cause this increased PEEP, or that positive end expiratory pressure. That's the pressure we're gonna put in the lungs continuously during the inspiratory expiratory cycle, and that's gonna inflate the lungs, and you know the lungs are encased inside the chest wall, the chest cavity, and that, it has some flexibility, but once you inflate them so much, they start to squeeze, on the heart, we always say kind of squeeze on the heart, but really what we're worried about is squeezing on these great vessels. And this is venous blood, so these vessels are, are not like arteries, they're not really stiff, they're more, back of a better, floppy. So they actually can get squeezed down a bit, and that decreases the amount of venous blood or kind of the preload type blood that's coming back to the heart, back to the right atrium. So, um, in the case of ventilators, that's a bad thing because it can also decrease a patient's blood pressure. So you decrease the amount of blood coming back, the heart can't push out as much and their blood pressure will drop and they'll say, hey, what kind of PEEP setting do you have on that patient? Is it a really high setting? Are there other pressures, especially we're talking about this, we're talking about mean airway pressure, that's the average pressure in the lungs throughout the entire breathing cycle. It's a calculation of PEEP PEEP is the best determinant of it or best changer of it, but then also our inspiratory pressures, respiratory rate, all those things kind of go into the mean airway pressure of that MAP. So an increased MAP at all is gonna decrease venous return back to the heart. In most cases, almost all cases, that's not a good thing. You don't wanna drop somebody's blood pressure just for the fact that you're going to try to oxygenate them. But with one type of disease process, it actually helps quite a bit. And I'll talk about that. So. This is the standard setup for most patients. We don't like it. We don't like the decreased venous return. But in the terms of cardiogenic pulmonary edema or cardiogenic fluid that's coming over to the lungs, it's actually really good. We're talking about exacerbation of CHF so much that the fluid is coming across the alveolar capillary membrane. And the best picture I have to draw of that is increased pressure in fluid inside this ves the vessels that are go by, by the lungs the pressure gets so high, and then it actually pushes that fluid over into the lung tissue, into the alveoli, that's gonna definitely affect oxygenation and those type of things. So, uh, cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema. So, it's affected mainly because the left side of the heart is not quite working quite as well, so the blood backs up, we have not necessarily backflow, but we have 
impedance of flow going to the left side of the heart and the blood ends up in this vessel. This vessel becomes dilated, the pressure comes over and it goes over into the airways. And now we have a problem because now we not only have a left side of the heart that's failing with this, and then, but we're having pulmonary edema that's actually coming over into the, the lung tissue, which is really a bad thing. Well, one of the main treatments that we're gonna see that you're gonna use for cardiogenic pulmonary edema is gonna be the use of CPAP. And it's something that we use in a lot of other cases, but mainly, and let me go over CPAP real quick, just for a quick refresher. Uh, I like to draw my pressure waveform like this, so pressure over time. Um, pressure over time in this case, and let's say we have a CPAP set of 10 centimeters of water pressure. What's gonna happen is, is uh, CPAP obviously stands for continuous positive airway pressure. So it's a continuous pressure going in. We usually do it with a mask. If you're doing it in the pre-hospital setting, it's gonna be with a mask, doing the ER setting, probably with a mask. We also can do it with an endotracheal tube and a ventilator, but the quick treatment of pulmonary edema in this case, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, is probably gonna be what we're gonna, we're gonna use something that's gonna be via a mask. So in this case, when we have something with a mask, the pressure goes over time, the patient takes a breath, it might have a little dip along the way, patient breath, patient breath, patient breath, but we're averaging somewhere in this area, this 10 centimeters of water pressure pushing in to the lungs. Well, what happens is, is it helps to offset this pressure of this fluid and helps to push the fluid back down into the vasculature. Now, you think with um, cardiogenic shock or you have some type of cardiogenic pulmonary edema, you think I need to get rid of fluid, right? We need to get rid of fluid as quick as we can. So you give diuretics way downstream, down here, you're gonna give your Lasix, your Remix, and all that kind of stuff, get, extra, get the extra fluid out of the body because the body's not processing it well, and then hopefully decrease that pressure there. CPAP works really well in these cases because it's a really quick fix because you're actually pushing that pressure and forcing that fluid back across into the vasculature. And then you're also increasing the amount of oxygen delivering and you're recruiting alveoli, you're decreasing their functional residual space. So it's all a really good thing when we start to use CPAP and you can get much quicker results with that. Uh, given a diuretic, it, it, yeah, it does work quick, but it's not nearly as quick as using a CPAP with a diuretic. But one of the really cool things is, is that when you use CPAP on a patient, you're gonna decrease their venous return. Now that makes perfect sense, right? Because CPAP is very similar to what we see with PEEP on a ventilator. So you definitely could decrease somebody's blood pressure a little bit with CPAP, even at high levels. But in the cases of using it with cardiogenic pulmonary edema, they're probably already hypertensive. So. Let me show a little bit of what CPAP does when we uh, exude it kind of on the lungs and how it affects the venous return. So let's do another diagram here. We're gonna go back to my square lungs, which I love to draw in our heart in the middle. And we have our superior or in our inferior vena cava feeding this right atrium of the heart. Obviously in the terms of uh, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, we're gonna have this left side of the heart's probably not working really as quite as well, and the fluid's starting to build up in the alveoli on this side. With the pressure being high, we'll use the CPAP to push the fluid out of the alveoli, but we're also gonna increase our functional residual capacity. We're gonna recruit all those alveoli, and we're gonna be also pressing this, these lung tissue kind of out and against uh, the, the chest wall, and so, what happens is, is you actually, when you have it against the chest wall, you're gonna squeeze in a little bit, decreasing your venous return back to the heart. And it actually takes a little bit of load off of the heart because then you're not pushing so much fluid coming back into it that it can't get rid of anyway. And you might decrease their blood pressure a little bit, but your heart's having trouble in this case with that extra pressure. So one of the best diagrams is to look at is when we look at obviously how we breathe and you know that when you breathe when you're breathing as a patient um, as a patient really as anybody it's all based upon negative pressure so usually in this plural space it's all negative pressure it's all filled with negative pressure diaphragm contracts you have more negative pressure that's when you pull air in diaphragm relaxes and goes back and that actually pushes the air out and causes 
you to breathe. It's all from the diaphragm and based upon these negative pressure inside of this area right here. Well, with that negative pressure, that's lets, that's lets the, those vena cava that are kind of large and kind of not quite as, as stiff as an artery, but they're just, they're kind of pliable. It allows them to work normally. When we add CPAP into this situation, we do something quite a bit different, which detrimental to some in the case of people, they're not cardiogenic edema, probably edema, but we actually cause this to be a little bit more positive pressure inside of the pleural space. And when you have that positive pressure, you're gonna decrease the venous return back to the heart. When you decrease that venous return back to the heart, you're taking pressure off of the heart because of the fluid coming in and therefore decreasing the blood pressure, decreasing the work on the left side of the heart. Because in most cases, in cardiogenic pulmonary edema, the pressure is gonna be raging. So as you make this more positive, you're gonna squeeze on those vessels and you're gonna also help their blood pressure, but you're helping their breathing in their lungs by adding the CPAP in. So decreasing venous return in some cases is really a good thing. Using CPAP, especially acutely for cardiogenic pulmonary edema is quite therapeutic. Obviously you also need to use some uh, diuretics downstream, but the use of CPAP actually takes some of the load off of the heart by decreasing the venous return. And I think it's a pretty cool concept. So I hope you learned something today. I know I did uh, doing a little bit of research and think about that when you're applying any kind of pressure to somebody's lungs. If it's good to have decreased venous return or if it's bad, in most cases, you don't like decreasing the venous return. In this case, it's actually good. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You know, only about like 10% of the people that watch are subscribed. So please just hit the subscribe down below and uh, support my videos that I'm making, putting out for the medical community and anybody else who's interested in learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.